This next lesson is going to be somewhat easier, but in order to do it, you do need a calculator. And again, in this course, you will need a graphing calculator such as this TI-83 here. Right now, you don't necessarily need a graphing calculator for these problems, but I promise you, especially in Chapter 7, you will need this. You'll need it some in Chapter 6 as well, and it would be really nice to start getting used to it now in this chapter. So, if you don't have a graphing calculator, go get one, and soon. You can find them at eBay, uh, usually between $20 and $40, depending on which model you get. I recommend the TI-83. It's going to be a little bit on the pricier end, about $40. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. And, uh, but uh, any, any of the Texas Instrument range would be great. So here we go. I'm going to write up how I would enter this on this calculator before I would write the answer. All three of these problems are radical expressions. Radical meaning uh, that it has a square root sign or a cube root. This little symbol right here is called the radical symbol. Okay, so these are radical expressions. Ra um, <clears throat> another thing that we would call them is irrational numbers. The decimal does not repeat, it does not end. And so I can't do them in my head. Square root of 78 is not something I can just, oh, dream up and understand that it's seven point whatever it is. Okay, and just know the rest of it. I'm not going to, unless you memorize it, there's no way to just know. There's no real method of getting the exact answer. So I got to use my calculator to help me approximate it. And so <clears throat> I'm going to type this in, and this one's pretty easy. All I'm going to type on my calculator, on this calculator, is there's a square root symbol. It'll p typically put a parenthesis after it. Um, <clears throat> if it doesn't, you don't need to worry about it but then 78, and just for habit's sake, close the parentheses. There's a parenthesis button on here that you'll, that you'll put. So this is what I would type on my calculator. Okay, for the next one, negative square root of 89. I need to be very careful here that I put the negative first, and on your calculator, there are two symbols. There's the subtraction symbol, which is right around the plus sign, and there's the negative symbol, which is usually around the decimal point or around where zero is down at the bottom. This is negative. I'm not subtracting here. I'm taking the opposite. Your calculator can't tell the difference between subtraction and doing the opposite. Uh, and so it has two buttons for the one symbol that we use in math. In this case, I'm doing negative square root of 89. So I use a negative symbol down below at the bottom. Okay. And then I, my calculator, do square root 89, and it's a good habit to put parentheses every single time. It's just a good habit. You're guaranteed that your answer won't be incorrect. In these particular two cases, those parentheses weren't necessary, but it is a good habit to get into. Okay, the next ones are going to be a little bit more confusing, and they'll make a little more sense when we get into uh, the next lesson. And uh, this one says the cube root... It's got a 3 here. The cube root of 25 is equal to, on my calculator, I'm going to put parentheses first, 25. Then there's this little symbol here that looks like an upside down V. Um, it's usually on the right uh, side near where the little arrows are on your graphing calculator. That means exponent. And the exponent I'm going to put on, I need to put parentheses. I put 1 divided by whatever number is here. So this is the cube root. I'm going to put 1 divided by 3. Okay, so 25, this literally says 25 to the 1 third power. We'll see that later, that the cube root and the 1 third power, they mean the same thing. But right now, this is how you're going to type in your calculator if you have a graphing calculator. Okay, uh, other calculators might have a different method for doing this, but I'm showing you how want to s to you to visually see what to do on your graphing calculator. Lastly, this one here, it's negative 4, so I'm going to put negative 4 in the parentheses, just like I put 25 here, and I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, it's a cube root, so to the one-third power. <clears throat> now, if I type all these in, uh, here are the answers that I get. Go ahead and see if you can beat me to it. Square root of 78 is I get 8.8317, and it keeps going. 
the question, they want you to round to three digits, three decimal places. So I'm going to do that. So for this one, I'm going to write 8.83 two because I'm rounding. It was one seven so I rounded. Uh, the next one negative square root of 89. I get negative 9.434. Again I'm rounding. Okay the cube root of 25. 2.924 and lastly the cube root of negative 4 is negative 1.587. Again, rounding to three decimal places. So this is what you should get on your calculator, rounding to the third decimal place. Uh, if you do not get this, we're going to have to work on how to use your calculator in class. But you sh if you have a graphing calculator, this is what you would enter in, and it should give you these answers.